subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm usma jafri here are the top stories we are tracking for you India announces state mourning on September 11 over passing away of Britain's Queen Elizabeth. UN chief calls for massive help as Pakistan puts flood losses at 30 billion US dollars. And Taliban signs contract with UAE firm for running flight services on Afghan airports. And now for all the details. India's Foreign Minister S Jay Shankar and Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Friday called on Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida in Tokyo a day after holding 2 plus 2 talks with their Japanese counterparts. Jay Shankar on Twitter said they underlined the importance of closer coordination of policies and interests of the two nations to ensure peace and stability in the region after the 2 plus 2 talks india and japan agreed they will deepen defense cooperation and plan to hold joint military drills involving their air forces india like japan is bolstering its military to tackle what it sees as increased security threats both countries are increasingly wary of china's growing military might and assertiveness In the East China Sea, China claims a group of uninhabited Japanese administered islets. India, which last week commissioned its first home-built aircraft carrier, is involved in a standoff with Chinese forces on their remote Himalayan border. The Indian government on Friday announced one day of state mourning on September 11 as a mark of respect on the passing away of Britain's Queen Elizabeth II. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said he was pained by the Queen's demise, who will be remembered as a stalwart of our times. Residents in New Delhi said they will fondly remember her as a motherly figure with an impeccable sense of style. The Indian government on Friday announced one day of state mourning on September 11 as a mark of respect to Britain's Queen Elizabeth II. who died at the age of 96 on Thursday after a long drawn battle with health problems India's president Draupadi Murmu on Twitter condoled the queen's demise Indian prime minister Narendra Modi said he was pained by her death she will be remembered as a stalwart of our times he said he also recalled his memorable meetings with the queen in 2015 and 2018 saying he would never forget her warmth and kindness most indian newspapers carried reports of the queen's demise on the front page on friday residents in capital new delhi said they will fondly remember the queen's motherly figure with an impeccable sense of style i remember her in such a way that she's that's like our mother's figure she has attained such a level that everybody loves her because of her love and affections for the human being that is the most important thing in my life that was my only thinking about it i would remember her as a very fine person and a very graceful lady i think for ladies we really look up to her the way she dressed queen elizabeth ii acceded to the throne in 1952 about 5 years after india's independence from british colonial rule in 1947 india is the most populous nation in the commonwealth although the queen was not head of the state Over the years the longest reigning sovereign hosted three Indian presidents she also paid three state visits to India over the course of her reign in 1961 1983 and 1997 In news from Pakistan hundreds of thousands of Pakistanis have been forced from their homes in a disaster blamed on climate change and estimated to have caused losses of about 10 billion US dollars disrupting the lives of nearly 33 million people. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres appealed to the world for massive help for flood ravaged Pakistan on Friday as he visited to boost the response to the disaster. Fishermen in Pakistan's southern Sindh province on Friday rushed to construct new boats to keep up with fresh demand due to widespread floods in the area. 
Land where vehicles and cattle-driven wagons travelled just a few weeks ago are now submerged under vast expanses of flood water in areas surrounding Pakistan's largest freshwater lake, Manchhar. Boats have become the main mode of transport ferrying people and belongings to safety. The construction of a boat takes around 10 days. According to Nabi, it cost around 200,000 Pakistani rupees, that is around 900 US dollars. Sindh has seen 466 percent more rain than average. Villagers near Manchar Lake flood their homes on Friday due to the rising flood waters. Record monsoon rains and glacier melt in northern mountains have triggered floods that have swept away houses, roads, railway tracks, bridges, livestock and crops and killed more than 1,391 people. The government says the lives of nearly 33 million people have been disrupted. Meanwhile, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres appealed to the world for massive help for flood-ravished Pakistan on Friday as he visited to boost the response to a disaster that the government estimates have cost $30 billion of damage. Both the government and Guterres have blamed the flooding on climate change. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif said Pakistan needs an infinite amount of funding for its relief effort, adding the country will remain in trouble as long as it doesn't receive sufficient international assistance. The United Nations has launched an appeal for $160 million in aid to help Pakistan cope with the disaster. U.S. Development Agency USAID Chief Samantha Power on Friday announced $20 million in additional help for Pakistan at a press conference in Islamabad. More news from Pakistan. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Friday assured the Islamabad High Court of all-out efforts for recovery of six missing persons, including journalist Mudassar Naru, who has been missing since 2018. The court has given the federal government two months' time for taking measures in the matter. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif assured the Islamabad High Court on Friday of making all-out efforts for the recovery of all missing persons, saying that he will not give any lame excuses. The Premier made the remarks during a hearing of identical petitions in the High Court seeking the recovery of six missing persons, including journalist Mudassar Naru, who has been missing since August 2018, when he was travelling in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region with his wife and child. The court gave the federal government two months for taking measures to ensure that the missing persons are recovered. It emphasized that there should not be an impression that law enforcement agencies were picking up citizens. The defense forces in Pakistan are widely accused of being responsible for the disappearance of an estimated 5,000 to 8,000 persons. Human rights activists have long claimed that enforced disappearances still take place in Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa where security forces operate with impunity and the Pakistan government has been repeatedly failed to act against such inhuman crimes. The Taliban administration on Thursday signed the third and the final major contract with the United Arab Emirates GAAC holding for running Afghanistan's airports. According to the Islamic Emirate, the flight guidance services deal will also include equipping the facilities and training Afghan staff at country's three major airports, including the one in capital Kabul. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan and the Abu Dhabi-based firm GAAC Solutions signed a 10-year contract on Thursday for United Arab Emirates GAAC Holding to provide flight services and manage planes landing and taking off on key airports in Afghanistan. The agreements would help the Taliban ease their isolation from the outside world, with no foreign country formally recognizing their government and strict enforcement of sanctions hampering the economy. It would also hand Abu Dhabi a win in its diplomatic tussle with Qatar for influence. The contract would run for 10 years. Ghulam Jalani Popal, deputy head of Afghanistan's Ministry of Transport and Civil Aviation, told reporters at a press conference in Kabul. Speaking at the signing ceremony, Afghanistan's first Deputy Prime Minister, Mullah Abdul Ghani Barada said, the contract will help the country's economy and trade. 
the Taliban, whose government remains an international pariah without formal recognition, have courted regional powers including Qatar and Turkey to operate Kabul airport, landlocked Afghanistan's main air link with the world and others. But after months of back and forth talks, and at one point raising the possibility of a joint UAE-Turkey-Qatar deal, the Taliban in recent months decided to hand operations in their entirety to the UAE, reports suggest. In news from Nepal, Sandeep Lamichane, the suspended captain of Nepal cricket team who has been accused of rape, released a public statement on Friday claiming that he is innocent. He also announced that he will take leave from Caribbean Premier League and will return to Nepal in a few days. In his statement shared on Twitter, Lamichane termed the allegations against him as baseless and said he hopes the law will act equally to everyone. The Nepal police initiated a probe into the matter earlier this week after a complaint was lodged against a 25-year-old cricketer by a 17-year-old minor girl. An arrest warrant has also been issued for him. Lamichane is a leg spinner and was appointed as Nepal captain replacing Gyanendra Malla in 2021. He formally captained the under-19 Nepal cricket team in 2016 during the Asia Cup. Later, he headed the team for Asian Cricket Council World Cup qualifier. Moving on, scores of Hindu girls in Nepal under the age of 12 took part in special prayers and rituals to please goddess Taleju Bhavani and seek her blessings on Thursday. It is believed that pre-pubescent girls who take part in this ritual do not suffer health problems and bad luck. Hundreds of girls from the Neva community in Nepal in their pre-pubescent perform special rituals on Thursday to ward off bad luck and diseases. Locally called Kumari Puja, this special ritual is held annually and is performed in front of the Teleju Bhavani temple in Kathmandu to please and seek the blessings from goddess Teleju Bhavani. It is believed that girls taking part in this ritual would not have any health problems. Nepal has a unique tradition of worshipping the living goddess who is appointed in certain interval of time following strict selection process. Living goddess Kumari is believed to have come to the earth in human form and is also regarded as the Hindu goddess of protection and strength Durga. The goddess is worshipped with great reverence and even the Shah kings follow the tradition of receiving tikka or sacred vermilion mark and blessings from her. Devotees across India bid farewell to Hindu elephant-headed god Lord Ganesha by immersing his idols in water bodies to mark the conclusion of the Ganesh Chaturthi festival on Friday. The 10-day long festival commemorates the birth anniversary of Lord Ganesha. Devotees across India bid farewell to Hindu elephant-headed god Ganesha after 10 days of his birthday celebrations and took out processions on Friday. Ganesha idols are submerged on the final day of Ganesh Chaturthi festival. People in western Pune city took out a grand procession on the streets as they headed to the nearest water body for idol immersion amid chanting of slogans and beating of drums. The immersion ceremony known as Visurjan signifies divine entities returning to their abodes after being the guests of the devotees. So today is the 10th day, uh, the final day the Ganpati Visurjan is there today. So it's a huge event and after two years, uh, you know, this is happening because of Covid, two years it was all shut. So this year I think people have come out with more enthusiasm and uh, you know everyone there on the streets. In Mumbai city of Western Maharashtra state, thousands of devotees flocked to streets after a two-year COVID-induced hiatus and prayed before the 14-feet tall idol of Ganesha. They carried out a procession and danced and daubed each other playfully with crimson hues. Several families and organizations gathered at the famous Juhu beach and were seen performing rituals and prayers before immersion of the idols into the sea. Ganesha is one of the best known and most worshipped deities in the Hindu pantheon and is considered the deity of prosperity. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.